parece una pequeña tradición interna, parece un movimiento de locos, parece la mejor estación total de todas, parece la tuca de un pitufo, parece un sonido argentino, parece tu perro tsunami, parece una botella de Coca-Cola, parece todo lo que te rodea. I don't like to think titles before finishing the work, but here they needed a title. And I asked him and mm -hmm. he was... And I like it, yeah, because also... Like he was in Paris. <laughs> no, yeah, I was in Paris. He lives in Paris and, you know, Paris is like Paris, <laughs> but written, you know, <laughs> so there was a relationship. Uh, I think that there's also a relationship with the last scene that you say that the camera is dead. They throw the camera to the, uh, to the sea, to the Atlantic Ocean, and well, I was, I am in Buenos Aires, he's in Paris, so this Atlantic Ocean that separates us, so that's... And the guy in the, with the smartphone, you know, I, we all, the way we communicate is by chat, so maybe that's something, yeah. As you know, I've done other films and I've shot already in um, Sierra Leone and in Mozambique. So, and they were very interesting experiences, so I wanted to go back to the same part of the world, but to a new country, to a new city, just to have a new experience, but in that part of the world. Um, and it's interesting for me because of many reasons, but one is that I don't see uh, these countries represented in cinema so much. I'm not representing the country, but at least in, uh, shown more than represented maybe, right? Or. So that's a simple reason, but it's a reason I like, like to have films made in different places and not always in the same countries. I don't know, I felt that in Argentina, um, at least in, in general, we only spoke about like the economical situation of the, of the continent, which is a part of it and it's important, but I felt it was just that, that it was a bit reduced. Normally I don't need anything specific to go to a country. It's not that I write something very specific I need to look for like this or that thing. I write things that could be applied more or less anywhere and then when I arrive I discovered some things I can't do there and I have new ideas, so it was just that. There's nothing that's totally different from me. Um, I mean, that was maybe the idea I had when I didn't travel outside of Argentina. I imagined like, I don't know, Vietnam would be like another world. But then I went and it, I don't know, you expect a lot and it's great, but at the same time there is a little bit of you that is a little bit deceived because finally it's not so different. But then it's great, I like that. And then, but it's just moments you pass, you know, before going, you imagine you're going like to a new planet and then it's more or less the same and you're like, oh, it's not so different. And then you discover, so it's like both things are, are there, you know. So when I go to any country and to Guinea-Bissau, I think it's, it's, I don't feel so far from them. And also I feel I still have to learn a lot of things. That's why I go. But then I never feel so far from the other, you know. Um, or it depends if I just met you I feel far from you but then I will feel closer to you just time we pass together you know it depends on what, how do you how do you define exotism right uh, as it's used in a in this way of looking at the other something very far from you and you can see that in some films I think in this touristic thing you said or looking at the other as, I don't know maybe you are trying to put the other in a high place but as a very different And I, I think what I, what I feel is, I, I believe that what I feel, this thing of, that I'm not so different from the others. The good part of this term of exotism would be like this diversification of, of, of people that work in cinema in ma many ways. What you do, how you do it, the, how you use editing or image or many other things. Well, he proposed, <laughs> he, had, he told me if I wanted to do a video f with his poem or about or, I don't know, related to his poem in some way. Um, but for me, it was very easy to decide. I mean, or I didn't have to think a lot because, I mean, we know each other for a long time and 
I already liked his poems a lot and I already used his poems from my, for my other films, not in a direct way like here. Parece una pequeña tradición interna, parece un movimiento de locos, parece la mejor estación total de todas, parece la tuca de un pitufo, parece un sonido argentino, parece tu perro tsunami, parece una botella de Coca-Cola, parece todo lo que te rodea, parece material irrecuperable, parece trabajo hecho, parece hetero total, parece un chico simple. I started writing this poem in 12, in 2012, um, so it's like six years from, from now. Um, I've been writing it since then, and I will continue writing it. And I have previously made some videos of my poem with other filmmakers or video artists from Argentina and from Chile. The title of the poem is uh, Noise, so it isn't. So at the end, the poem, if when when if someday it is over, uh, that it will be probably when I die. Uh, I think that the, the answer of the poem is that it seems all that, but at the end it isn't anything of that. So I think that in some way there hasn't to be any relationship between the poem and, and the images or whatever happens with the poem because the, I don't know, the, the joke or the trick is that it isn't nothing of, of that. Parece un invierno re benévolo, parece un robotito emocionado, parece un tic tac con capa, parece filo de porro, parece una melodía muy vieja y muy querida, parece medio siome. One thing I like about it is, like in a way, it's a, a good way to get in, to get older, you know. It's, yeah, I want to be old to see where is that poem 50 years from now, and if I can still recall or remember when I wrote each line which still happens to me sometimes when I hear to the poem or I read the poem again and say, ah, oh, this was, it, it makes me remember things. I like that kind of, uh, of processes that when you find something that can be used by anyone. In a way, if you think about that, what he does when he gives the camera to, a, to someone, to the actor or to the people in the movie is the same. In a way, it's the same, you know, anyone can do this. Uh, just take the camera and, and make a movie in a way or film, whatever. and. Uh, so I think there's a relationship there also, um, and it's yeah, it's a way of, of I don't know of, of being personal, uh, of, of of letting somebody else show uh, show himself or herself or whatever with the same technique that you are using to to make a film or to make, or to write a poem or to do whatever you do. Después de los dos parece la quinta de Uribe, parece la quinta de Mancilla, parece un falsificador que se mueve en el área de Minnesota, parece la firmeza y convicción de la gente que va hacia un objetivo preciso, parece la rama fina de un arbusto, parece la muñeca de tu novio. I really like like poetry reading. I mean, and I thought it was interesting like to have him reading it in in his own tone. It was a part of like when he proposed me this of the poem, I really liked to have the poem that will determine many things in the video, like the rhythm, the length of the video was determined by the length of the of the, his reading of the poem. In the shooting, it was difficult because I never shot knowing that I would have a voice all the time the, over everything I'm shooting. So it was complicated. For me, it was like the same way of taking his poem, was with his voice and with his way of reading it and with his rhythm and with his everything. An idea was also to to him to read the poem while he was running. Yeah. <laughs> so he actually made me run like for 20 minutes while reading the yeah. poem, yeah. and then he didn't use the shot. <laughs> but it's okay. Yeah. But I think that he he made a, a good decision not to use it because when you say the same word for so so many times, like sim sim sim, it's like something in the muscles of, of that I use to to articulate that sound. Uh, it's it hard to get tired, so it's really tiresome for me to, to read the poem uh, in one shot, but I also like to do it in one shot. We have an idea that if someday we show this film in other places, like, I don't know, in like France, Italy, whatever, to find a poet uh, from that country or from that language to translate the poem and to read it himself, that must be interesting, more than making a subtitle. That's an idea we have. Parece la muñeca de tu novio. Parece un espacio de más de cinco varas. Parece acá el Dragon Ball. Parece la pasión incorrecta. Parece la colección más difícil. Parece una molesta palanca desarticulada. Parece un uruguayo en Plaza 11. I think in the film we are almost all the time in public space um, because of many things. I don't know. I feel um, 
I really like when things happen in public space, in life also. I think it's a very good way to share and a place where we uh, share with many different people. So when I will go to cities where people drink in the streets or when people have fun in the streets or when people use the streets more, I think it's so interesting and I want to a, a little bit share that in the, in the films I do. Also, I really like when I have two very opposite things in, in together. Like when you were speaking about intimacy, I was thinking that's great that intimacy happens in public space also. You have these two sensations together that are opposite in some way. So I'm happy to, to think about intimacy now, like in that way, more clearly, uh, about the poems, intimacy, and which is true when you were speaking, I, I, I agree with you. So I was happy to like have that in a more like conscious way in words. Well, I always like to try cameras I don't know, even if they are sort of good or bad quality. I really like to have the camera and see what I can do with it, you know, and the best way possible, like what the camera lets me do, what it doesn't let me do, and how I can look for an image that is interesting for me with that thing. Well, I am a lot about trying and touching and, you know, I don't, I'm not a lot about like knowing about the camera. It's just my way, I suppose. And then here I knew I wanted to go to with a small camera because uh, I wanted to shoot in the streets and it's better to shoot in the streets with small cameras. And then I started like looking what are like the sort of new cameras I don't know that are sort of um, small and I started looking at that on the internet and I found this camera which uh, it's a GoPro Fusion so it's sold for sports I think mainly. I work with people and, but I don't work to show them and also, I don't work to use them to show my ideas, you know, it's like a mixture between that. I show a part of them uh, that they decide and a part of what is shown is just my ideas that maybe are not so related with them. So I think always the films are this collaboration between me and them and this sort of mixture uh, or this sort of encounter between me and them. Some things are conscious, some things are not. Sometimes they just do whatever they want and I discover it afterwards. And but I really like to think the film as that, not me making a portrait of them and not them just being my tools to show what I think. I wanted to share like something about virtual reality, but in cinema. I lost a lot of time like uh, trying to think how to do that and I couldn't find people that helped me with that because People that knew a lot of virtual reality didn't knew about other things of virtual reality, like games or interactive uh, works, but not about this of looking at a video and then recording the movement. Uh, but I really like this thing of thinking that the movement and the frame in the video is decided by someone looking at it in, virt in this real virtual thing that is very like real and fake at the same time. And then the movement is very body movement. I, I think it's much more fluid. I don't know if more fluid, but it comes from the body and from the experience of being there in a virtual way after being there in a real way. I don't know. This mixture of things was interesting, and I liked the result. La molesta palanca desarticulada parece un uruguayo en Plaza Once. Parece un tema anónimo, plural, folclórico de la gente morena de esa zona. Parece una joyita perdida encontrada por error en un sueño. Parece una estampita militar. This move, strange movement happened when I when I did the, the the framing. I was telling you with the virtual reality headset. I think it happens when the information goes from the computer to the headset and then back to the computer and then I screen capture the computer. At the first I was like surprised a little bit and I was like, mm, what's happening? Why is this like this? And I looked at it a little bit and I had my doubts and I liked it but then I was thinking I'm not so sure but then I did more. Then I discovered like there was different loose loss of frames in the maybe in the borders of the image than in the center and I thought it was a very strange thing, and in some moments I thought it was like a dibujo animado. Animation. Right? Animation, yeah. sometimes it looked like, like an animation, sometimes like an old film that like, has less frames. And finally I really liked it. It was all a thing, you know, like to accept it, to think about it, to think should I leave it or should I do it in another way. I don't know, it's something that, like many things that I told you, I get the camera and then I see what happens with it, you know. And of course it's a decision, but it's not something I knew would happen, so it's a decision just after it happened.
here it's a little bit like that it starts in the sky and it finishes like down or it starts under the sea and it finishes in the sky i don't know why i, I like this a general movement helps me to like organize my head in thinking the film i i suppose that the poem as a, as you hear it, it it's it's becoming more heavy in some way which is i like that sensation it has its moments i, I think at least for me you know when i read it sometimes i can't it's like oh, i can't and then it comes back and then i love it again and then i hate it for a little while and then you know but i love that i love that for my films also so i thought that this sort of enlightening enlightening but not of light of light of being light and not heavy of movement would be interesting in contrast with the poem like first we walk then we start like being more like agile and then phew, finally we are like uh, we are not uh, anymore in like in this sort of movement of heavy movement so i thought that would be interesting so i thought that having people running in the middle would be a good transition between one and one movement and the other a little bit by chance this happened like the, the the movie starts with a big big zoom the colors are just the colors in the image of the people walking so but it's a very big zoom that i shot again and i zoomed again so it's a like a, an extreme super zoom <laughs> and at the end it finishes with an RS zoom but in the dark and but that happened while doing it and I don't know, I think it's just a way of organizing myself. Parece un robotito emocionado, parece un tic tac con capa, parece filo de porro, parece una melodía muy vieja y muy querida, parece medio siome, parece cero hardcore, parece que se vende, parece profesor de campus, parece una joya de valor incalculable, parece carnaval, guacho. 